so I'm here, I've got to put at the time. Can't get on the ferry. I've got the wrong NHS, I've got an NHS test for chancing around home. I have to pray for a private test in order to go to France. The regulations just changed today. So, um, yeah, looks like I'll be travelling tomorrow then. We're here, we're here in Portsmouth, got to the ferry terminal in time and everything. Um, the French government decided this afternoon that we had to have tests done. So I thought, well, I've got an NHS test at home, so I did that one. And the government won't accept NHS tests because they're self-administered. So I have to go to a chemist tomorrow morning and then get on a ferry tomorrow afternoon. That should be okay. I'm still going to France, didn't cost me anything. Um, I have to pay for a, a test at a chemist and we've now come to the sports centre in Portsmouth which is on park for night and it's I'm going to take the dogs for a run around this field and then make a cup of tea I think but um it, it's quite a nice spot it's really quiet but there's a lot of people around because they're all doing their sports and stuff it's not too like deserted like some city places but so yeah there we go, these dogs ready to go. Right, off we go. So there's the dogs on our own this pub, and there's the swimming pool. Really busy pool, kind of competition, the ball set up. We have a swimming goal at the time. And we're here running around in the park. Chemist. We've just been uh, through the check-in um, at Portsmouth. Um, the difference with Eurotunnel is your dogs don't need to get out the car. They stay in the car. The woman handed it was the same check-in. I just drove through, showed her my passports, dogs' passports. Fortunately, I did get the dogs' French passports when I went in the summer. Um, and then she just passed me the microchip reader and I read their microchips and that was it. And then she put a sticker on the on the front of the van. And we seem to be number one in the queue as well. So um, the difference is, I, I missed my boat last night because the French government said we had to have a test and I did an NHS test. I didn't have time to go to a chemist. But um, if I got to Portsmouth like an hour earlier, then I could have found well, it's a Lloyd's chemist. It's a really good Lloyd's chemist. Two miles from the ferry port. You just drive there. You can park out, right out, at the door. Go in and it only takes 10 minutes to get your test. Costs £29. So I did that this morning. So last night I stayed at the, um, the leisure centre. And I went to watch a swimming gala just for fun. Here it is. So I thought I'd just go through all the paperwork that you need um, in order to travel because it is is a lot of paperwork and it's taken me a while to get this whole list together. And even though I thought I was quite organised, I still didn't have the right test. So I did an antigen test at Lloyd's Chemist because the French government won't accept NHS tests because they self-administered, which I suppose makes sense. And when you're coming back on the other side, it's 25 euros going to a chemist. But there's like every single chemist does the NH does um, antigen tests because um, yeah they're free for French people but they don't have any home tests they don't agree with home tests so I'll just go through all the things that I've done to get organized for this trip regarding paperwork first thing number one I had the van serviced right you have to check your MOTs up to date and I got a service which cost 200 pounds or something then i'm carrying my driving license and i will carry a lot of european countries expect you to carry id so i will have my driving license with me all the time um it just lives in my purse i have van insurance so i had to pay with my insurance with it's the dial direct they i had 60 days cover which is quite good um for europe so i paid 20 pounds for the third month so i've not got 90 days cover um, to be in Europe. I'm also carrying the 
V5C certificate, which is the registration document shows that the van is belongs to me, which you have to carry when you abroad. I have my passport. I also have a photocopy of my passport. I also have a copy of my passport on the phone. The same with the dog's passports. I have photos of their passports as well in case they get lost. I have travel insurance for me in case I get ill. I have annual insurance, which is actually quite cheap. I have RAC breakdown cover, which comes with my van insurance um, and it covers European cover. So I paid like £250 for my van cover for the year, um, which I think is quite good. And the thing with Dial Direct is they actually answer the phone, unlike loads of people. Um, what else? I have all the other safety things. I have a reflective jacket, a warning triangle, which is being replaced by V16 flashing emergency lights. But at the moment, the triangle is still being phased out. I have the head beam deflectors, which I should put on now, actually, because I'm going to arrive in France in the dark. I have a first aid kit and I have a UK sticker on the back. I've also put an EU sticker on just so they, they know I'm not a Brexity type. So, there are the dogs waiting. So they're going to go on the ferry on their own. They're not allowed into the cabin with me. So they've got dog food there, self-service dog food in the front. They jump over this, I took down this headrest in the middle here. So they can just jump over into the back. Lola always sleeps in the back. So I've left my bed made up. So when I arrive in France, I'll be off this line. So I'm going to just go straight to sleep. I'm going to go to like a playground about two miles from the port and park um, park there. Um, at the back they've got two bowls of water and then I'm also going to come down to check on them. So um, they do have plenty of space. I mean I would never leave them in my car for 10 hours but they love the camper van. Mia? Mia doesn't know why we're just sitting here but they're fine with being left two of them and they've got food and water and they've been to the toilet they normally only go to the toilet first thing in the morning i don't know if they're going to do a wee when they're on the boat i'll come and take them out and see if they'll do a wee um at supper time other safety things i'm carrying i have a fire extinguisher or blanket i have the fire blanket i have uh, two torches i'm carrying extra fuel um diesel i'm carrying oil water um I am carrying a map and a phone and a charger, the apps I have on my phone, I have park for night, I have um, search for sites and oh, I have another one, parking ones, I have Google Maps and I have Waze, I prefer Waze to Google Maps, it's not as shouty. Um, I have a blanket in case I break down, I have a hat, I have snacks and drinks, I have my health card, apparently my health card is still valid, my EHIC health card. I have my medication for three months. I have two bank cards. I also have the um, Starling bank card. Uh, so I have no charges for when I use my bank card um, abroad. Um, you have to remember to activate it in England using chip and pin, else it won't work um, when you get to France or Spain. Um, I have the NHS app on my phone. I've also downloaded copies. Um, of my proof of vaccination and I've had the booster so I've got those copies in my files on my phone I also have paper copies as well I have a spare pair of glasses which apparently you need I have my sunglasses I've got a yellow band to help me drive on the right um, I have all my valuables out of sight I've checked my tyre pressure tyre pressure has to be 45 um, I don't have winter tyres, but I'm crossing the border at San Sebastian. So if you cross near the sea, you don't need the winter tyres. Um, and I'm going to have a break every two hours to rest my eyes and also to have a walk and to let the dogs have a walk. Um, for my safety, I don't tell anyone my exact location. I do have the three, Life360 app on my phone which um, allows my children to know my location. Um, so I'm sharing my location with yeah, my children. Um, and I've got locks on my doors and I have two dogs. So, oh, 
here I am. I'm in my cabin. I'll just show you around. It's really, really nice. And it's big as well. I'll show you. As you come in, there's a wardrobe, rail, mirror, tea, coffee, DVDs. We've got Wi-Fi, TV, chairs, sofa, coffee table, two beds, telephone, sockets. And oh, bathroom's quite nice. Bathroom, I might have a shower. Towels, toiletries, hair dryer. It's all over the top, really. And there's the shower. Looks quite good. Um, so I'm going to go for a walk on the boat. They're showing Free Guy at the cinema. I don't know if I want to go to the cinema. I might have a lie down in bed, actually. Have some tea and biscuits. But that's it, I'm finally on the ferry to France. There's the view out the window, which is quite good. You see lots of little ships and we're sailing on the way to France. not your tunnel is not the cheapest and it's not the easiest so I've worked out some prices and I've calculated the toll costs and the diesel costs so I'm driving a camper van and I'm traveling with two dogs I'm um, traveling I'm on my own so I'm the only driver and I'm going from Kent which is quite near Eurotunnel in Dover but I've chosen to travel from Portsmouth to St. Marlow. So this means that I won't have all the um, toll roads in northern France. It's really hard to go along wiggly roads in northern France. You always end up going on the toll roads and they are quite expensive. Um, it's a two hour drive down to Portsmouth and I'll show you how I get on traveling with dogs along that route. I've worked out the prices, the sort of rough one-way prices for traveling on different routes. So if you're going from Dover to Calais or Dunkirk it's roughly 150 pounds it takes two hours I know sometimes you can get cheaper offers and things like that um, you do have to leave your dogs in the van but they might not mind just being left for two hours the reason why a lot of people go with Eurotunnel is because you don't have to get out your car it's only 35 minutes and you're with your dogs the whole time um, when I went with Eurotunnel in the summer it took a long, long time to check in, and um, it was actually quite an expensive trip as well. It was I paid about two hundred and eighty pounds each way, so I'm now paying less than that, and I'm going on an overnight ferry um, from Portsmouth. I would like to go from Portsmouth to Santander or Bilbao just to cut out all the travelling through France, but it was so booked up. It's booked up six months in advance to get a pet-friendly cabin. Um, I also get quite seasick, so I want to see how I get on with, uh, you know, 32 hours on a ferry. I'm not quite sure whether I'm committed to that. So that would cost £600, including the pet-friendly cabin. But you do have to book months in advance. So there's maybe something I would try doing next winter and book well in advance. So the one I'm doing is Portsmouth St. Marlow, which is £230. It's an 11-hour journey, and I have to leave my dogs on their own in the camper van. But I wouldn't leave them in a car for that amount of time, but they really like being in the camper van. It's warm, it's comfortable, they can move around. Um, I have to get to Portsmouth in time to feed them, make sure they have a wee. They usually only poo in the morning. So, um, and I can also go and check on them as well while the fer ferry is going. There's also a ferry from Plymouth, but it only runs in the summer because um, the weather is really bad in the Bay of Biscay. So really bad storms. So uh, that's something which I could think about maybe going in October next year, going a bit earlier in the year. Um, and then I would, because driving to Plymouth is a lot easier than driving all the way through France. 
Um, but let's see, Portsmouth is a lot closer than Plymouth. You don't realize how far it is driving down through Devon. Anyway, the cost of diesel. So I've worked out diesel, £1.21 per litre in France. It's about, yeah, I've tried to do all the... So I've done these calculations. Um, other people might find uh, diesel's actually more expensive than that. It has risen in the last few weeks. Um, but, yeah, I've worked out the petrol costs, how many mile, how many kilometres you're doing. If you're going from Calais to... Malaga in the south of Spain it's 2,000 kilometers 20 hour trip um, and then going through Eurotunnel so I've worked it out at 724 pounds to get down there so if you're going um, from oh on the ferry from Portsmouth to um, Santander and then driving down to Malaga it's a very similar price although people think it's expensive to the ferry from um, Portsmouth to San Sebastian to Santander or Bilbao you actually save so much money um, and also you know you can pretend it's a mini cruise can't you but we'll have to see what the seasickness uh, side is like so I've worked out the price difference at 46 pounds but a fuel costs more on the motorway. There's a big difference in fuel prices, motorway, and when you get off the motorway. And also, you have to see where you're staying overnight. If you're in a camper van or if you're in a car and you'd have to pay for accommodation on the way. So, here's a map showing you all the different ferry routes to Europe. Um, usually, people drive to the south of England and then go from there. Um, so, I'm looking at going from Portsmouth over to St. Marlow, which is, I don't know, going over to Cherbourg or Kern's another route. And then there's also a couple of new routes. There's also a route from New Haven, which is quite nearby, and um, also from Poole to Cherbourg. So the one I'm going to try next year is definitely, try, I'm going to try to get from Portsmouth to directly to Spain, to Santander or Bilbao. So let me know in the comments if you've gone that route, what it was like with the seasickness, um, with being on the ship and what it was like for your dogs as well. Thanks.